Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make our baby sized granny pop pullover. The adult version was so popular I've had so many requests for a child size and of course I had to make a little baby size for my new granddaughter. So this is our little pink version and I have crocheted it in Sunrise from Mary Maxim. This yarn is so soft and cozy, perfect for babies. It's 100% premium micro acrylic. It's a DK weight, light number three weight yarn. And the care instructions are machine washing cold, lay flat to dry. So this color here is Desert Rose, but it does come in some beautiful pastel colors a beautiful true white, which is just gorgeous. So lots of colors to choose from. Mary Maxim also has their lullaby yarn, which is identical. It just is a beautiful variegated. So I'm gonna show you today a variegated version. If you want those pops of color, still in a nice yarn that's perfect for babies. So we've started here this beautiful purple. My daughter loves purple. so. For little Rose, we're making her one in the purpley pinks and white colors. So this is how it's going to work up. I'm gonna work through the start of the pattern again with you. They do have some pretty, really pretty colors to choose from if you like these colors over the solids. And I'll have links in the description box for those that you can go check out. I'll be using two hook sizes for the pattern, so a 4.5 millimeter as well as a 4 millimeter crochet hook. These are streamlined hooks from Furls, and I'll have the link also in the description box on where you can purchase these hooks. The sweater is worked from the top down in the round, so we will crochet up this yoke. This pattern does come in baby and child sizes, plus the adult version is also available and I will link all of that in the description box below. Now just a little housekeeping before we begin. If you love these tutorials and this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of these type of tutorials. I really appreciate all of your support and liking and sub subscribing is a great way to support my channel. This video assumes that you already know how to crochet, although it is a beginner friendly, easy pattern. You do need to know your basic crochet stitches and I will work through the pattern fairly quickly. There is a slowdown option on YouTube. So if you click that gear icon, the settings there, you can slow down the video. So if you're finding I'm going too fast, just slow the video down or pause, rewind until you get the steps. In this tutorial, we'll be working through the zero to three month size in the lullaby yarn in the color cuddles. If you need more sizes, just click through the link in the description box. It's gonna take you over to the blog where you will find all the sizes for the pattern. We'll be starting with the smaller hook and I'm going to put a slip knot on my four millimeter and I'm going to start with a chain of six. The collar is going to be worked now in rows and then we'll join it up to start working in the round. So in the second chain from the hook, we're going to work single crochet, a single crochet and then single crochets in each chain across so that we have a total of five stitches. So this gives us the width of that collar. You can always alter this. This seems to be a good size for a baby. Now we're working single crochets through the back loops only, and our collar will be worked this way throughout. Gives it a nice, simple ribbed stitch. Chain one and turn and work through the back loop only. Chain one and turn. Okay, so I'm gonna continue working this. It's going to need to be a total of 48 rows 
So I've worked up a total of four and you can really count by the ridges here. They'll squish in together and I have two, four. So that's sort of how I count them as I go and you wanna work up a total of 48. Okay, so I've worked 48 and now see how we get transitions in this. If you don't like that, this is sort of how my other one looked. They're all gonna look different but you could always do a solid color for your collar and for any of the ribbing and then go with the pop of color for the rest. But I'm just gonna continue doing it all in the one color. But that's an option for you if you wanna combine a solid and a multi. It will just give you a little bit more consistency. You have a little more control over how it looks. Otherwise, you kinda don't know what you're gonna get. But anyways, let's keep going. So once you get your 48 rows, let's just give it a little measure. You wanna make sure that this stretches to fit over the baby's head. Okay, so without stretching it, it's about 10 and a half, but it stretches quite a bit. So I know my granddaughter's head's about 14 and a half. So I already made sure that it would go over her head when designing the pattern. So now what you'll do is chain one. We're going to fold the band together. You can go through the back loop over to that starting chain and we're just going to slip stitch this together. Chain one, okay, so here it is. And now we're going to single crochet around. You want to single crochet one stitch per row. There's one, two, three, four. And you'll find as you go, you're going to have this thicker section and then this section here, it's more just a little loop you're gonna work through. That usually will keep you right on track for the right number of stitches going around. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and I have done that pretty loose. You wanna make sure you still have that stretch. You don't want that too tight because we want that to stretch over baby's head. So now we're going to slip stitch in the first single crochet to join. I'm gonna to change to my larger hook and you can change for that single crochet row if you're finding you're crocheting too tight. So now we're gonna set up for our raglan style. So it's going to be our sleeve, front sleeve, back worked all the way around. So we're going to begin with a chain three and a double crochet in that same stitch. Now we're gonna chain one, skip a stitch, work three doubles, one, two, three, chain one, skip a stitch, and three doubles. chain one, skip a stitch. So we've worked across nine stitches. And in the next stitch, we're going to do a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. And that is a V stitch. We'll chain one, skip a stitch, work three doubles. So this first section is our sleeve, our V separates, our next section, which is our front, 
and we'll be working across 13 stitches for the front. Chain one, skip a stitch. Chain one, skip a stitch. So that's now 13, including our skip stitch, and we'll do another V. So double, chain one, double. We'll chain one, and now we'll work across our next sleeve section, which is nine stitches, including the skipped ones. So we'll skip a stitch, work three doubles, chain one, skip a stitch, three doubles, chain one, skip a stitch, and now another V. Okay, so now we're working across the last section, which is our back. Skip a stitch. And once we're all set up, things are going to go much quicker and easier. Chain one, double crochet in the next three. Chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next three. Okay, so we should have one stitch left, chain one, we're skipping that stitch, and we're going to slip stitch in that starting chain to join. Now we'll chain three, work a double crochet, and this counts as our V. So every time we're at a V, we're going to do another V stitch, and now we're working three doubles in all of our chain one spaces with a chain one between them. So chain one, double three double crochet in that first chain one space. Chain one, three double crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, three double crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, here's a V stitch, so we're going to work a V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the chain one space. We'll chain one, and in the next chain one space, right between the V and the cluster, we'll do three doubles. Okay, so just repeat this around chain one. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. I've ended my cluster in that last chain one space. We'll chain one, slip stitch again, chain three, and a double. So we've worked another V in the V, and this is how we're going to continue. So I've already worked up my yoke for the size we're working on. So you can see it here. So I'm just finishing it off and we'll count how many rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we keep continuing, it just keeps growing. Each section will go up by a cluster each round. We're doing all of the V's and the V stitches, just continuing increasing. Chain one, so we're ending in that last chain one space with three doubles, chain one, and slip stitch to join. So now what we're going to be doing is separating our front, our sleeves and our front and our back. 
So if you look at the sweater like this, we're now joining it up so that we have our openings for our sleeves and we're gonna continue working the body in the round. So to do that, we've already slip stitched into this first V. We're going to skip all the way over to the next V. Find it right there. We're going to slip stitch into it. We're going to slip stitch over to the chain one space. We'll chain three work two doubles. Okay, so you can see now we've closed this up and the sleeve will now be worked separately and we're gonna work across. Okay, so we'll chain one. We're just following our pattern, chain one and work three doubles in our chain one spaces. So I'm gonna work this over to our next V stitch. Okay, so we've come to the next V. This time we're not slip stitching or anything into it. We can do that when we join our sleeve. So the sleeves will be where each sleeve will be worked a little differently, but we can worry about that later. Right now we're going to chain one we're going to skip over the sleeve section. We're going to find that next V stitch, which is right here, skipping right over it and working three double crochet in the chain one space. So it's just a seamless join across. Okay. And then when we, we do want those joined up, but we'll do that later when we join onto the sleeve really easy. So we're just going to keep working here now, going across our next section, just working in our cluster stitch pattern. So I'm going to work this across and then I'll meet you up at the join. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. I'm gonna get that last cluster worked in there before we join. So we'll chain one and we're going to join up here in that starting chain. So I'm gonna take a little count for you and see how many clusters we have all the way around. Okay, so we have a total of 20, just to make sure that you're on track. So we slip stitch in the chain three, and now we're slip stitching over to the chain one space. I'm gonna chain three, and then we're going to start. chain one and continuing to work now in the round. Okay, so I'm going to work this all the way around and then I'm going to meet you back up at the join again. As we come to this underarm section, the chain one, you're still just going to work that three doubles in that chain one space. Chain one and just keep going around. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. We're going to chain one, slip stitch in the chain three and we're slip stitching across to that chain one space. Okay, so what this, this is going to do is our join here is going to keep shifting. We are going to see a little bit of it because how our color is changing, but it's still going to be fairly invisible. So we're going to continue going as is, working in the round. Now, 
you need to do, we had seven rounds before the joining and then we do seven after. So we're going to have a total of 14. So you can just count down from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, and just keep going so that you have a total of 14. Because we're working on such a tiny size, it works up super fast. So I'm gonna go ahead, you're just repeating now what I've shown you, I'm gonna go ahead and work up the rest of my rounds and then I'll show you how to do the little band going around the bottom. Okay, so I completed the additional row, rounds that I needed. Now for finishing this off, you could fasten off here and join over to the side if you want your seam not right here in the center. So this is the front, but you can't really notice the join that much, but you could always make the back the front if you wanted instead. Really both of them look the same, so it doesn't really matter. So you could fasten off, join over to the side, or just for ease, I'm just gonna show you, continuing from right here, how to do the next step. So I've slip stitched to join going to chain one and I'll work a single crochet in our first space in the next stitch the next stitch and we're just going to skip over the chain one so work a single crochet in every double crochet stitch around Okay, so once we get all the way around, we're gonna slip stitch into the first single crochet to join. And I'm going to switch over to my smaller hook, chain six. And then we're going to do a join as you go ribbed band. So in the second chain from the hook, we'll work a single crochet. single crochets down the chain. So I've got five stitches. We're going to skip that first stitch right here and slip stitch in the next two. Turn. We're going to work through the back loops only. One, two, three, Four. You do want to count because it's easy to miss a stitch. Chain one. Turn. Going to work back down, single crochets through the back loop. One, two, three, four. So those two rows account for those two slip stitches we did and now we'll slip stitch in the next two and we'll continue working two more rows. So turn, skipping the slip stitches and we're working this all the way around. Okay, so each row is accounting for one stitch along the bottom of the sweater. Okay, so I'm gonna complete that off camera and then I'll meet you up to seam that together. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and we're finishing at the top. So you can either fasten off and just sew this together or you can slip stitch it. It is a little tight getting in here, but we can slip stitch it. So just go through this side 
and then go through this stitch. And you can always seam it this way as well. So just slip stitch this across. Okay, and then once that is complete, we can fasten off and weave in that tail. Okay, so what I would probably do is flip this. Maybe have that as the front. Either way, it still doesn't look too bad. If you had seamed it over at the side, you wouldn't get the difference there, but because it's so mixy, it looks okay. And then on this one, all in one color, you can't even tell where I've seamed it up. Now what we're going to do is add join on our, for our sleeves, which will be our next step. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our 4.5 millimeter hook and let's make a slip knot. What we're gonna do here is find that V stitch, go to the underarm and find the V stitch to the right. Then we're going to slip stitch over to the next V stitch. Okay, and then we're gonna slip stitch into the chain one space. So now we're in position to work around. So we'll chain three, work three doubles, chain one, three doubles in the chain one space and work that all the way around. Okay, so I've worked all the way around. Now you're going to have your starting tail that you can sew this so it's not such a big hole. So when you're weaving that tail, you can definitely stitch that closed a bit more. Now what we'll do is slip stitch in our starting chain to join and slip stitch across. We're gonna work the sleeve now just like we did the body and we're also doing an additional seven rounds. So we've already done one, so this will be the second. So seven more rounds or a total, if we count from up here, you'll have 14. Okay, so I'm just going to continue now working this sleeve around off camera. You just will be repeating now going around till your little sleeve is long enough. Now let's just take a look at our other sleeve because we already had those V slip stitch together. You are going to come and join right in here to your first chain one space. Put a slip knot on your hook, join in, chain three, work two doubles, and then just continue around. So I'm gonna work those up off camera now and I'll meet you up to do the band for, or the cuff for the sleeve. Okay, so I've been working on my sleeve and if we count here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 rows. And now what we're going to do is start, we're gonna work around. So I've slip stitch to join. We'll chain one. We're going to work in the second or the first double crochet here. So it's the center stitch. Then we're going to skip the next. We'll work a single crochet in our chain one space. Skip the next double single crochet. So basically we're single crocheting in every other stitch around. Okay, so I've worked around 18 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch to join. 
going to change over to our smaller hook and now we're going to do the join as you go ribbed cuff. So just like I showed you down here, we're doing the same thing. So we'll chain out six. Single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And down the chain. So I have five stitches. We're going to skip the first stitch, slip stitch into the next two. Now we'll be working single crochets through the back loop only. So we skip those two slip stitches, single crochet in the back loop only. Chain one. Okay, so make sure that you have five stitches. We'll slip stitch into the next two. Turn. Okay, we're going to just continue in this manner now working around so we have 18 rows to match up with our 18 stitches. Okay, so I'm finishing up and you should be ending up at the top slip stitching just one final slip stitch. Now we'll chain one and you can either fasten this off and just sew it together or flip it so we have right sides facing and we're going to just slip stitch it. So you're coming across to our first chain and then going through the stitch. It is a little tight doing the slip stitch so if you find it kind of awkward then just go ahead and seam it with your yarn needle. Okay, so I'm just going to work this all the way down and then I'm going to fasten off and weave in that tail. Okay, so here is our finished little sweater. You can see I have a little bit left over, so you'll just need one ball if you're making our tiniest size. I want to mention again that if you click through the link in the description box, there will be all of the links that you need for the yarn to go across the blog for the pattern or you can also purchase the pattern in one of my shops. So this includes our baby and child sizes and I also have an adult pattern available. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so you stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.